Welcome to this APM video. In this video we're going to be installing this board here, a Minium OSD, onto an APM 3.1 and it's configuring it so that it goes in between the camera and the video transmitter to provide a great little on-screen display. Now the way this works is that it will plug into the telemetry port on the APM and then we've got one cable that will plug into the camera and another cable that will plug into the video transmitter itself. To do this you're going to need another piece of kit, you're going to need a trusty FTDI basic adapter. I'd always recommend that you get one with a proper FTDI uh, chip, it makes life a lot easier. If you're already into Arduino or multi-wee control boards you'll have one of these kicking around already. If not, search for FTDI basic on places like um, eBay and Banggood and you'll find them. This board is less than about $12 and will provide a similar kind of overlay and interface to systems costing three, four, five, ten times that amount. So it's a great investment and it's one of the coolest things that you can do. There are other Minim OSD videos on the channel already. So there's one about installing it onto the MultiWii and there's also one about installing it onto the NASA 32 boards. So this is a very versatile piece of kit. It doesn't only work with the APM, although that's what it was designed for. It's been developed to run with different platforms too. So in this video, we're going to actually connect it up to the computer. We're going to download the software and talk about where we get the software and firmware from. Once we've done that, we'll talk about how we then wire it up to the APM and how we wire it into the camera and the video transmitter. And then finally, we'll do a quick demo and showing it you in action. So before we get into the bits and pieces, let me just talk about how you connect the FTDI and the board together. Um, you'll notice that on the FTDI adapter and the back of the board they are clearly marked with all the different pins and you'll find one end is called black and one end is called green you just need to match that up with the black and green pins on the other side and there you have it you're ready to plug a USB cable into it the other end of which can plug into your PC and we're ready to go into the netbook and actually start downloading and configuring the board. So here we are on the netbook. The first thing we need to do is download the software that we'll both use to configure the Minima OSD, but also the firmware that we're actually going to put on the Minima OSD that it'll run itself. Now there are a couple of options here for this that are very popular. The first one is Minim OSD hyphen extra that can be found at code.google.com slash p slash minim OSD hyphen extra. This is the slightly later version of the code and you can download it from here and set it up. We're not going to use this one right now. We're actually going to use its uh, predecessor. Uh, we're going to use the original arducam.osd. Now the process we're going to go through is uh, very similar for Minim OSD hyphen extra. So if that is the one that you prefer, you can absolutely have a go at that, but I'm using this one for now. Now to download this, don't go into the downloads area, click on the downloads of firmware and tools down here, just above the donate button. If you click on there, it'll take you to a couple of files on Google Drive, the latest config underscore OSD, and the latest Minim OSD underscore 2.2 hex file. That is the firmware for the board. That is the uh, zip file that includes the graphical user interface. So we need to download both. I have done that and popped them onto my desktop. So there is the hex file that was ready to upload onto the board. And there is the zip file. Now if we open the zip file, we can see that there's um, only a handful of files in there. And I've copied all of those into a new folder so we can run it. So let's start by running the OSD underscore config executable and that should give us the interface to start flashing things up to the board. Now we're at the point where we can plug in our Minim OSD. So I'll plug in the FTDI connector to the bottom of the board and then I'll plug the USB cable into the machine. Once that's connected First thing we need to do is make sure that the right COM port is selected in this interface and then we're going to flash the firmware. So we'll go to 
update firmware navigate to where the hex file is which is on the desktop for me so it's there it is click open and here you can see it's now uploading the file onto the board it's pretty quick this compared with some of the other videos that we've done for the multi Wii and NAS A32 next thing we need to do then is update the fonts on the board so we're going to update the character set we're going to go into the new folder on the desktop there's the character set I'm going to click on open there's the character set uploading 254 I imagine fantastic okay so now that's the firmware and the character set we can actually do the configuration so each of these three panels config panel 1 and panel 2 we're going to go through in series and when we've finished everything we're going to click on the save current tab to OSD so I'm not using any RSSI information uh, not bothered about toggling uh, the images so we'll keep that the same um, if you want to know in particular what each of these parts do then you can go to the web address that we were looking at before and read the wiki pages stall speed mile per hour um, I'm actually going to put that very high just because I don't want stall speeds appearing because we're on a quadcopter um, over speed I would say let's put that about 45 imperial units um, that'll work for me Minimum battery voltage, it's a three cell LiPo, so I wouldn't want to run it live anything below about 10.5. Battery warning level, let's have about 15. Let's save that tab to the OSD. And then we get onto the bit which is really nice with this interface. Here is the panel as it will appear on the interface. So this is how it's all configured. This is one of my standard kind of layouts and over here on the left you can actually turn things on and off and have it appear on the screen on the right hand side or if you're not sure what you're looking at then you can actually click on the piece you're interested in and it'll show you what it is that you're looking at and the tick box then allows you to select it or not. So the way I've got it set up here is on the top left hand corner we have the number of visible satellites just move that around a little bit let's move it like that. I don't like to have things right at the very edge normally just because um, they can get in the way uh, that's the MAV heartbeat to show me that I'm getting updated information um, then we have the heading rows you know what I don't like the center let me get rid of that let's put the heading rows at the very top so I can see which direction I'm going in that is my um, direction to home arrow. I like that in a very prominent place just so that I can find it. That up there is the distance from home. And then down here is my timer of how long I've been flying. Let's move that up just a smidgen. And then obviously that's my latitude and longitude. The battery voltage and also the battery percent. I'm actually going to get rid of battery percent. I think we'll just keep the voltage. So that's how it could be. Or if you really wanted to, you could actually turn on everything. And as you can see, it starts to get a little busy. I don't like it anywhere near that busy. I find it becomes distracting on the actual flight. So we'll go back to panel one. We'll save that current tab to the OSD and that's what it should look like. And we'll save panel two to the OSD as well, just for completeness. Okay, so now I have my configuration set up. I have what I want it to look like. So I can see the mode, the amount of satellites that I've got, the MAV heartbeat pulsing away, my direction and uh, distance to home, my current heading, warnings right in the middle, latitude and longitude at the bottom in case I lose the craft. Then I can look at my last readings on the display and see what's happening. Time it in the bottom right hand corner so I to keep track of how long I've been flying and a good old battery voltage on the bottom left. 
Right, now we've done that, we can actually turn this off and we can start wiring it up to the APM. So the first side we'll talk about is where the telemetry port is on the APM 3.1. It's actually underneath, so rather than being on the top of the board, it's at the bottom and it's the only port that's currently there. If you look on your board, you'll find one massive chip and next to that JP2, the jumper 2 that we've talked about in our other APM 3.1 videos. And right above that is the telemetry port. It only has four pins. Now, to connect that up to the Minim OSD board is relatively straightforward. Um, the pinouts for the telemetry port, again, still looking at the bottom, go ground plus 5 volts, transmit and receive. And on the Minim OSD, it's the exact opposite. We're looking at the top of this board at the moment. So it goes green, transmit, receive, plus 5 volts and ground. So actually, if the Minim OSD is upside down and the APM is upside down, it's a one-to-one -one cable which is very easy to make. So here's the one that I put together using one of the cables that came with the APM 3.1 and all I've done is I've just crimped some pins to the end and popped those pins into a four-way connector that I can push on the bottom of the Minim OSD. If I didn't have a four-pin connector I could just use some heat shrink on this or a, a spare three-pin servo connector and put the other pin on there as well. You'll notice, of course, that the transmit and receive pins are uh, designed to be back to back because you need to fit one transmit on one to receive on the other and vice versa. So that's very straightforward and easy to set up. Next thing we need to talk about then is what we do with power. Now, the plus five volts that we've just connected up to the APM will power part of the board, but not all of it. The Minim OSD actually has three separate power systems on it and three main components and we need to talk about that briefly to help you understand why we're going to do the wiring in the way that we are. The three primary components on the Minim OSD are the Atmel 328 chip, that's the processor, then we have the Max 7456 monochrome OSD chip, that's the one that overlays the um, video with the on-screen display and then we have a voltage regulator which is in the top right hand corner and the voltage regulator's job is to take the 12 volts that come in and out of the video ports on the bottom right hand side and turn that into 5 volts to power part of the system. So if we just have a look at these power areas, first one there's a massive great 5 volt area that's connected to the 5 volts that the APM will be supplying and that runs the majority of the board. It's all the APM and supporting electronics on the left hand side. It stops at one of uh, two pads at the bottom of the Minim OSD and the next plus five volt area is going to run the chip that does the on-screen display. And that's actually by the side of the 12 volt area that we just talked about where if you're going to use 12 volt cameras you'd plug the voltage in and out of those pins. So there are several options to power the board and typically what would happen would be that you would power the left hand side of the board from the 5 volts coming from the APM and the right hand side of the board would be powered from the 5 volts coming out of the voltage regulator that was supplied by the 12 volt video system. Problem with this is, is that the voltage regulator on the Minim OSD has had problems and I never trust it. It also means that uh, if you are not running 12 volts or uh, you're changing voltages and flicking cameras in and out, it's easy to get confused. So what I do is I make it really straightforward and I actually solder the top and bottom uh, two pins together and then that allows the plus 5 volts that the APM is supplying to run and power the entire Minim OSD board. We don't have to worry about what voltage is on the output pins and it's safer to power the board that way. We're not going to have a failure of the power regulator on the Minim OSD destroying part of the board or destroying the MAX chip. So now we've done that and we have our two blobs of solder across the two 5 volt areas at the front and also at the back for the ground planes we're now ready to talk about how we're going to connect it up to the camera and the video transmitter. 
So normally in a FPV system, you are going to have a video transmitter and out of that will be a three or four cables that will go to the camera. And that will supply a positive voltage, a ground, and usually a signal wire for the video. Now what we need to do is to put the Minim OSD in between the camera and the video transmitter. And to do that, what I do is I make up a couple of little cables. One will then plug into the camera. So the camera feed will go into the video in along with its associated ground. And then the video out of the Minim OSD will go back into the video transmitter. Again, just the signal with its associated ground. And you'll notice that the power from the video transmitter to the camera bypasses the Minim OSD altogether and just connects one to the other. And again, that way, doesn't matter if it's 5 volts, 12 volts, 12.7, 4.6, whatever it is, so long as the video transmitter and the camera are happy and they're connected in this way, we don't have to worry about voltage regulation or getting into a pickle. So let's have a look at that in real life on the bench. So here is the Minim OSD with those cables made up. So here's the one on the left that's going to plug into the telemetry port. And then here's the two cables on the right, one for the video in, which is going to plug into the camera lead and one for the video out. So to actually connect this up is pretty straightforward. We're going to plug the telemetry cable into the telemetry port at the bottom of the APM. And then we're going to unplug the cable from the camera to the video transmitter. And then we're going to plug the video in into the camera and we're going to plug the video out into the video transmitter and that's pretty much it we are ready to try this out so let me stop here and drag out my black pearl fpv ground station monitor we'll pop that on the desk then we'll power everything up and i'll show you it in action so here we have the uh, system all set up. So we have the APM 3.1 with a GPS here on the left hand side. We have the uh, Minim OSD with the two lights lit showing that both 5 volt systems are working and the little light which is flashing away uh, the amber light showing that it's working. We have the video transmitter at the back and at the moment I have the camera under a small velvet black bag but that's so you can see the display. And here's the display as we asked for it when we configured the software. So we have the information in the middle, latitude and longitude at the bottom, our voltage, our flight time, the mode that we're in, the number of satellites, we're still waiting for a GPS lock which is why I have latitude and longitude at zero, our heading and once the GPS locks we'll also have our direction and distance to home arrow will start appearing as well. In fact, as I'm talking, we can start to see that we're starting to get some GPS data coming through as it's starting to acquire satellites, which is pretty good because we're actually inside right now. So now we can see it working just to prove that the video is working as well. There we go. That's the video at the back of the camera. Uh, but of course, with the cloth over the um, video, it's actually easier to see the display. Now occasionally what might happen is that when you first power it up you don't get the video. The simple way to sort that out is to press the reset button on the Minim OSD and that should fix it. And again just to recap we are not running any voltage from the video transmitter to the camera and vice versa. It's going outside. So as a last thing let me just press the reset button and show you what the power up sequence looks like. booting up, requesting data streams, and there we are, we're back in business. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are wanting to add this to the APM Mini 3.1. It's one of the cheapest, coolest things you can do and makes all the difference to your FPV flying experience. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and happy flying.